today we're going to check out quite an interesting keyboard and I actually haven't reviewed one like this before so I was pretty excited to receive it and this is the Mistel Barocco MD600 and this is in a box that you expect for a mechanical keyboard I mean it's nearly a cube but also it's just a nice and stylish looking box as well opening up the box we have more boxes the smaller box has all the accessories we have a user manual and another user guide there is also a normal mini USB cable and then a micro USB to micro USB cable. We also get a spare enter keycap and then one of the nicer wire keycap pullers I've seen come with the keyboard. And here is the keyboard split into two parts since as you would have probably already seen in the thumbnail this is a split keyboard. I have the white version but it also comes in black and an RGB version. The individual pieces aren't really heavy but that makes sense since there's not too much there. There's also no flex to them since again they're small pieces and because of this it feels quite strong. But of course these pieces can be put together and it's done by just pushing them together so there's no magnets or latches or any sort of mechanical connection so it's just their friction fit. And I don't know, it's something that people may not like and I do know there's people out there that don't like it but it's absolutely fine when in use on a table as it is tight enough but if you lift it you can see the nature of the connection. It does make it annoying to move together and the natural reaction or thought would be that it should have magnets or something but if you want to travel with it you would take it apart but I have seen quite a few people asking why there's no proper connection so that is something to consider. Anyways, in this state, it is a 60% keyboard, being 60% of a full-size keyboard that you see everywhere. So it's small, but you do give up a lot of uh, primary functionality, like the function row, numpad, nav cluster, and the biggest sacrifice for many being the directional arrow keys. They're all still easily accessible though, but still many people require primary accessibility. So why a split keyboard? One of the big pros for one is the ergonomic options. First of all, in its joint state, it's a 60% keyboard meaning that it's small enough that you can drag your mouse closer to the center of the desk for better shoulder positioning. But when you split it, it opens up many more options. So when typing, our arms have to cramp inwards, but you can split them for a more natural position. And then if you just rest your hands on a table, you realize that your fingers angle inwards, so we can also angle the pieces inwards. And this is seen with many other split keyboards and ergonomic keyboards like the Kinesis Advantage and the popular ErgoDox and even like many ergonomic membrane keyboards from the likes of Microsoft. But the hardest thing about this is typing. If you don't have a proper typing technique, it is quite difficult to use it this way. And this is the situation that I'm in. I use three fingers on my left and two on my right and I get so many typos with the letters B and Y just because I'm so used to using the wrong hand for those letters so I have to reach to the other side. So it's definitely something that you have to adapt to and it may take some time depending on your technique. Also if you only need one side of the keyboard then you can hook up just one side and put the other one away. This is particularly useful for gaming especially with something like FPS gaming where you pretty much only use the left side. So it gives you much more space for your mouse and if you need to do large and quick mouse movements. I did have issues with how the cabling worked when I first got it and that was my fault for not reading the manual. So looking at the back we have two mini USB ports and three micro USB ports. But basically the larger side is the master unit which everything connects to. To use both sides of the keyboard you have to have the mini USB cable connected to the large side and then connect the two sides with the micro USB cable. If we put the mini USB cable on the smaller piece, the right side of the keyboard will not work. But if you want to use just the left side by itself, you can just make that work by itself. The furthest micro USB port is for connecting a numpad, and also the mini USB cable is really nice with a tough braid, and the micro USB cable is coiled and can be stretched but not too far as it will start pulling the pieces back together. The enclosure is made from plastic which has a slight texture to it and is satin which is resistant to fingerprints and the keycaps are of the same nature but a bit more smoother. 
The enclosure is very simple looking, but it does have a bit of an angular design with the side profiles just for that bit of edge. At the top right we have the Mistel logo which again is simple and in chrome and on the bottom right are some LEDs for layers and programming stuff which we'll look at later. It uses a steel backplate which is painted white but after taking it apart a couple of times the paint has been damaged a little bit because of the friction fit. On the bottom are 8 small rubber feet for non-slip and then a really cool feature are flip up feet which are pretty much never seen on 60% keyboards. There are two on each piece and they use the same feet as the IKBC keyboards where they offer two different heights which is awesome and they're also rubber tipped. What you can't do however is leave one foot down and have them at another different angle. And it's undeniable that when split it does look awesome and it does spark attention. The staggered split adds a really strong aesthetic edge to the design but it's clean at the same time. And the keycaps complement the design with a simple enough typeface or font, which is the same seen on the Poco keyboards. The switches used are the Cherry MX key switches, and I think comes with the four main colours, but this one in particular has the Cherry MX brown, so it's quite light and has a tactile bump halfway, but no audible click like the blues, so it's kind of a mixture between reds and blues. And here's a quick sound test. So yeah, nothing new here, it's just the Cherry MX Brown keyboard and the switch you get will completely change the feel and sound of the typing experience. The keycaps are nice and thick Vortex PBT keycaps just like you find on a poker. PBT doesn't shine like ABS and it does make the typing experience nicer. The legends though are not die sublimated but are pad printed so if you run your finger over them you can feel it. And these aren't the best, and after a long enough use, the legends will start to fade away. Alright, so since this is a 60% keyboard, it needs ways to access the other functions of a keyboard to make it fully functional. But the Barocco takes it further where we can nearly remap any key. Everything is controlled via the FN key at the bottom. So first of all, there's the default secondary layer which is printed on the front of each keycap and will give pretty much all the other primary functions that are missing. So the directional arrow keys, the nav cluster and function row is included with also some media keys and other little things. Ever since I've received it, there's been a few firmware updates improving its programmability. So make sure to check out their website for the latest firmware. There are four layers to the keyboard. The default layer cannot be programmed so we're left with three layers to play around with. Each layer can be accessed with the FN key and the chosen layer and the LEDs at the bottom right will change colour. So I'll go through the process with layer 1 but this is the same for layer 2 and layer 3. First of all there are a few keys we cannot change. The T, G and B keys are designated for timing delay and can't be moved. Also the layer keys which is the secondary function cannot be changed. First choose the layer, in this case it's layer 1 so it shines red. Then to program a key we have to enter the programming mode by pressing the FN key and the right control key. And then choose the key that you want to program. Then press the key that you want to be there instead or you can also assign it to one of the secondary functions such as mute. Then press the PN key to exit the programming mode and FN and right control to save all those settings. And since there's two spacebars, you can change the functionality of the one that you don't use to something else. We can also change the keyboard layout to Dvorak or Colmac with function and A. So it's pretty easy once you know the order of operations and it really allows you to customize the keyboard in a way that makes work or other activities more efficient. 
Opening up the keyboard is super simple with a bunch of Phillips head screws and there's no clips or anything else since it's just using a simple lip and groove design for the joint. The top plastic shells are of course heaps flexible by themselves as it isn't a closed loop like normal and the plastic isn't anything special and is about 2mm thick for the rims. The bottom plastic shell has a bit of ribbing at the bottom and the screw bosses aren't reinforced. It doesn't matter too much though but I pretty much see more reinforcing on most other keyboards. The metal backplate is made from steel and is painted white and is about 1.5mm thick which is the standard on most mechanical keyboards. And attached to that is the PCB which looks pretty clean. Remember there are no LEDs on this version and the larger piece is the master unit. So overall it's definitely an attention grabbing keyboard with a staggered split in the middle. Ergonomically it opens up so many options on top of the already ergonomic advantages of a 60% keyboard. Although it's definitely something to get used to and how long it takes to adapt depends on the user's typing technique. The build is solid and is pretty standard with the plastic enclosure and steel backplate but it's pretty light because it's a 60% keyboard in the first place but overall it's nothing special. The onboard programmability is top notch so we can basically remap anything to anywhere over a few layers making it useful for switching between gaming and work layouts if you want. And there's not too many widely available split keyboards out there. But one of the advantages of this is that it can still be used in a traditional way since it's basically a split poker. So if you want to explore different ways in interacting with your keyboard, then this may be an option for you.